Hey, Chad here with LearnMixedReality.com. Welcome back to the tutorial series where we're creating a full game uh, from start to finish that will run on Windows Mixed Reality devices. And this week, it's pretty exciting because uh, in this session, we're going to be hooking up our motion controllers. So we're going to be using the Mixed Reality Toolkit's input manager and hooking up code so we know when we select one of our items, one of our shells here. So let's go ahead and uh, dig in. So last time we had this locked, I'm going to unlock uh, the game controller. And I'm going to actually create a new script here. Create C sharp script. And I'm going to call it item input. All right, we'll open that up in Visual Studio. We can see we obviously inherit from mono behavior, but also want to inherit from I input click handler. And I'm going to hit control dot and bring up the Hollow Toolkit Unity input module. I'm going to start using that. And I'm going to hit control dot again to actually implement the interface. I'm going to delete the start and update. We don't need that. And now this is going to happen whenever we actually uh, tap, if we're using the HoloLens air tapping, or with the uh, Mixed Reality headsets with our motion controller uh, clicking the trigger. Okay, So selecting something with the motion controller and, and clicking the trigger, this will get the input clicked. Now, in our input handler, we actually want to, we're going to associate this to the uh, each of our items. So we know when each one's been clicked. Okay, so I'm actually going to uh, select all three items, and then drag item input into there. And so now each item has the script item input on it. And go back to uh, Visual Studio, and I need to know which item that we're associated to. So we're going to do a serialized field, and we're going to just do uh, item ID. Now when I save that, come back to Unity, uh, this is going to update, and now we're going to see an integer show up here. So there it is. And the very first one, we do want to leave that as item ID is 0. And the second one, we're going to change to 1. And the third one, we're going to change to 2. So we got 0, 1, and 2. All right. So now we've added in this item ID. Uh, we want to know if that's the one that we clicked on. And uh, to do that, we're just going to say uh, gamecontroller.instance, and we want to call a method, because we want to say like check for item, right? Passing in that item ID. So we want to kick off this logic to actually have our game controller check for item. So I'm going to save that, go over to our game controller, and let's create a method to actually do that work. So we'll just add this somewhere close to the bottom here. We're going to say uh, public void check for item. And of course, passing in the item ID. And might as well log that we actually got here. Let's say uh, check for P. And we got a core logic and we we'll actually call check for item. Okay. So let's compile this and then go back over here to Unity. Make sure Unity's happy. And save the scene. We'll hit play. All right, I'm going to look down here and take a look for our items. Open up our console. And I'm just going to select this first one. And we see check for P happen. Checking item 0, selected item 0, match was made. So my score is 3. So that's nice. Now, this is just the data coming back. We're not actually saving the score. We're going to actually create our own local score uh, next week in the next video, next session. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and just continue uh, working with these item events. I'm going to try the second one here. And sure enough, it's just checking for P in item one. 
And it just happened that the match was there too. So it came back with a score of three. I'm going to try the last one here. So check in P2, but no match was there. So the I happened to get lucky the first two times. This last time, uh, not so much, uh, but that's all right. Let's let the first one, no match is there. And so we're going to start looking at the logic that we put in last week. Now that we actually have our events hooked up here, our click event hooked up, we can take a look that when I select on this last one, we would expect to see a strike, no match made, um, and a strike actually be present. So no, ma no match made, and the strike is true. We start the turn, and reset the items, reset is complete. We checked for P and 1, no match was made. Second one, and the match was made. It was the second try, so the score is 2 coming back. So everything's looking good, which you know it was because of the test that's in that uh, in the core logic there. So we're on our next try, check for P2. It's not there, so I missed my first one. And no match made, so I missed my second one. And so now I'm going to get my second strike. Okay, so we, I got it right on that one. Try this one. No match made. No match made. And then I got a third strike. So when I got my third strike, it actually says game over. And now it's reset complete and I can start another game. So no match. I got a match in my second try, so my points were two. Okay, so let's go and stop playing. I'm just going to clear the console here. And let's go to our uh, player settings. So I'm going to go to build settings and then click on player settings. And we're going to enable virtuality supported uh, so that we can see this actually working in the device itself using the motion controllers. So while I'm in here, I'll just add open scene. So let's see what it looks like on the device itself. I'm going to bring up the uh, Mixed Reality Portal. So we're going to hit play here in Unity. And then jump over here so you can actually see. And what we're seeing here is the floor. So we have the floor. And uh, we should be able to see the controller. We're not seeing the controller right now. There it is. Um, I had to hit the trigger so I can actually roll up. So I'm guessing that this changes there. So that's unfortunate. I went here, but I have a feeling it changes while I'm playing. Well, I got you go to play on Unity. So, what I'm thinking I'll have to do is move this to another screen. Just so you can kind of see that again. I'm going to hit play in Unity. You can see the motion controller and I can as I'm moving around the thumbstick you can actually see the motion controller thumbstick moving I can push straight back and back up so I'm actually moving back I can go to the left and turn to the left turn to the left turn to the left and I'm doing about 45 degree angles and I can keep doing that of course go about the other way too and the other thing you'll see is on the thumb um, the thumb pad I can move my thumb around here and you can actually see where I'm touching the pad. Um, but the thing is, our table is not on the floor. <laughs> it's underneath the floor, actually. And if I wanted to, I could kind of keep backing way up here. Um, and keep backing up. And we can actually see the table turn a little bit. Right there it is. So our table is underneath the floor. Uh, so let's jump to Unity. I'm going to hit the Windows key on the motion controller. 
And we'll go back to the cliff house. And there's the Unity window. Um, so I'm going to put down my motion controller and take off the headset. I'll bring the Unity window back over. We'll drag that back over here. And uh, we'll stop playing. But before I do that, you notice the table is at ne negative 2.5. And the floor is at zero. So, what I want to do is I'm going to actually just change the table instead of being negative 2.5, because when it actually runs like that, um, it's just going to run fine. So I just want it to be at 0.5. I'm going to save the scene. I'm going to uh, move this out of the. Well, actually, I'm going to hit play and move this out of the way, and we can see scene loading again and here's our controller and I can turn around and our table is exactly on the floor where we want it uh, by simply putting it at at 0.5 there's actually a script that you can use and it will reset it based off your floor uh, to one but that's not exactly what we want because uh, the floor would cut it in half if we use that script as it exists right now at the time of this recording. And again, the Mixed Reality Toolkit is changing a lot. Um, so I would totally expect at some point in the near future for us to even have like um, a ray ability and an arc ability with the motion controllers. But uh, for now, um, you should at least have the functionality that you're seeing here and maybe even more so as time goes on. So I should be able to actually... Um, let me... Tele well, I don't want to teleport up on the table there. So I'm actually going to tap on the items here. So I'm just holding down the trigger, clicking the trigger on, on some of these. Okay, now I'm going to hit the Windows key. And bring over Unity again. All right, I'm gonna actually, yeah, I'm gonna stop playing. And the console, we can see as I was clicking or clicking the trigger, we were getting the events. So the motion, while we don't have any visual cues um, showing up right now, we're get, we are getting our debug information. So here we have the code actually running on the mixed reality uh, device itself. So I'm actually for now going 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 to go ahead and uh, shut down uh, the mixed reality portal. I'm going to drag uh, Unity over here to be the first one again. We'll clear out the console. Now something I should have mentioned when we were just in the headset, and I just nonchalantly said, well, "Let me just teleport closer to the table." Um, I did that by simply pushing up on the controller, on the motion controller, and that was all built in. We didn't do anything special. We got that out of the box, just like we got the motion controller, and we could see how the uh, controller, we could push to the left or the right, and even see where our thumb was at on the trackpad with the little light there. Um, we can push up on the uh, motion controller stick, and that's going to initiate uh, the teleport sequence. So. I uh, just kind of skimmed over that, and I, I wanted to point that out here, uh, which I thought about while I had it running, but that's okay. I think you can uh, piece that together. Uh, but that's going to do it for today's session, where we looked at the motion controllers and just what's built in. And again, that's all been there since the beginning, since the very first day when we brought in the Mixed Reality uh, Camera Parent, and the Default Cursor and Input Manager. And really, it's all because of the Mixed Reality Camera Parent. As you see, it actually has the motion controllers, and it has uh, this boundary. The boundary provides our floor. We were able to then take our table and put it at 0.5, so it would kind of sit on top of that uh, the floor. And uh, the motion controllers here is working out of the box with the actual controller model. So we can actually see the model. Now, for whatever reason, if we wanted to override that, if we were, let's say we had like a hand um, mesh prefab that we wanted to use, then we could override our left controller override by dragging that prefab in here. Same thing for the right controller. 
So maybe in your game, you would want to use the, the actual motion controller model. You don't have to do anything special. Just use the Mixed Reality Toolkit, drag in the Mixed Reality Camera Parent, and you're golden. If you want to um, use something else, let's say like a bow and arrow. So you had a bow in the left hand and an arrow in the right hand or something of that nature. Then you could drag in the prefabs over top of that. So that in your scene or at that point or even through code, uh, when they picked it up, you would replace their actual controller with a totally different game object. Uh, and, and the same is true there with the touchpad if, you, if you're if you actually uh, to try and display the touchpad in a particular way. So hopefully this was beneficial. Um, if you like uh, this tutorial series, by all means let me know. I need to know if I should do more things like this where I, because uh, we still have quite a bit more of content uh, to go through, obviously. Um, we're what uh, session number four here, and uh, we have uh, quite a few more to go. Next time, and the next session, we'll actually go over uh, scoring and hook up uh, scoring and hook into uh, the game over event, things of that nature. But uh, for now, we're done with the motion controllers. We last week we talked all about the core logic and actually did some testing on that. Actually, I guess that was two weeks, uh, two sessions ago. Last session was actually hooking up that core logic uh, to the game management uh, script. And now we have hooked up the, our input motion control to our objects. And uh, next time we'll work on scoring and then we'll actually link up uh, the game components to the logic and clean up some of the, the input and um, then we'll work on getting like uh, some text in place so we can actually see our score and um, high score system will be put in place and then we'll actually work on some animations and hooking up the animation so a lot of material left to come so definitely uh, stick around if you're not subscribed to the channel feel free to do so so that way you can be reminded uh, when these uh, next videos uh, come out and uh, if you like the video, by all means, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, go ahead and hit that dislike button. That way I can know if I should uh, continue to do uh, tutorials like this or if I should uh, find something else to do with my time. Well, again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video.